Alright, this is Crom episode 18, and I am joined for the second time by Adam Dodds. Adam, good morning, and thank you for uh, showing up. Hey, Kurt. Thanks for having me again. Hey, yeah, yeah. So you are well on your way with your Crom pinup, um, and... I'm just going to let you go ahead and just share where you're at with it. Um, you did send me some um, uh, snapshots, uh, which I, I appreciate. Um, I'm going to bring them up on my screen. I'll actually put them right over the top of uh, our you know, screen for the recording part of it. Um, but you're almost yep. ready to hit the inks, right? That is correct. I'm just, um, you know, <clears throat> what I, I did this pencil version right the, and the way i do my doodly gobbledygook is typically purely stream of consciousness um <clears throat> but with this being like um you know the 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 good and bad part of doing stream of consciousness work is sometimes at the end you have something that it's like oh awesome and then other times you have stuff that's like uh it didn't quite get to where I needed it to go. Right, right. <clears throat> Which is to say that for in the interest of this doing this pinup is like I wanted to have like vague like um ideas of big shapes, right? Okay. There's the figures and then just some general con conception of what the bigger kind of psychedelic y shapes will be in, in the piece. Uh, and of course, you know, with the pencil version, I, I did end up noodling and doing all kind of stuff. But uh, basically, you know, it's just a, a jumping off point. I wasn't even sure if I was even going to do anything remotely close to this, but I ended up really liking this weird looking eye thing. So that's pretty much made the transfer. So it, it's similar to this, but not exactly this. Yeah, the uh, whole idea of chance is one of the exciting points that uh, I wanted to bring both you and Jason Schoonover in because as I was just seeing your stuff on um, Instagram um, and then the, 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 the doodly gobbly goop, um, it, 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 that's all you can deal with is chance. And so right. you're, but, but you're going in and out of consciousness in a sense. So in other words, there's a lot of, especially since this, you know, this could feel like a commercial project, you know, you, you're uh, doing this so it can be printed and, and help promote uh, Crom the barbarian uh, revised that I'm working on. And I appreciate it once again. Um, yeah, the more chance that you can bring into it, the more possibility of fantastic that could come around. Right, exactly. Um, you know, that's not to say that, you know, part, part of what, <clears throat> you know, uh, well, I sent you a pic, you know, two days ago and the, the blue line final piece hasn't changed a whole lot since I sent you that pic, but it, it has had some revisions uh, what was my point there? Oh, basically, like, you know, in the doodly gobbledygook, you know, there's, like, the sweet spot where, you know, I'm not thinking and the pen is just moving, right? But there are other times where it's like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of at a stopping point. I don't know what to do next, right? And I'll stop and look at the piece. for, And, and that's what I've already done for just the rough part is, like, Oh, do I want this curve to do this or right, do I want right. to go under the feet right, kind of thing? Right. So, you know, even with the stream of consciousness, there is a little bit of like stepping back and being like, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> don't get too ahead of my skis. Planning is always good. I, I don't I, I don't say uh, uh, or endorse, I should I should say, uh, uh, just uh, flying off the handle. I actually. um find that to be the 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 basis for not liking abstract work when i see it out there in public whether it's uh modern and contemporary prior to the last 20 years or you end up going into a show um and you you end up seeing pieces um there's very far and few between because it feels like there's just a lot of haphazardness that's jumping in instead of just taking chances but 
I don't know about you. I'm going to assume this is similar in process, but I have a whole, actually, I just got this to help me keep organized. This is a, uh, a little like, kind of like, I guess you would see them in a shop, right? And so I would be able to keep all of my inking and, and penciling tools um, off to the side. But that's what I'm ba that's what I'm basing everything on. Are you working in that same kind of idea where you're holding maybe in your left hand, if you're a righty, um, you know, two or three mark making tools and you're just saying, I'm, I, I want to hit these kinds of marks? Yeah, yeah, I would say that that's true. You know, <laughs> here's here's my little... Uh fancy nice yeah um, <laughs> yeah yeah the same thing which uh but yeah yeah totally i always have like a this is what i have <laughs> 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 yeah do you listen to music is there music or oh, yeah. something in the yeah. background who do you who do you listen to the, um primarily oh you know my my tastes are <clears throat> quite varied um in fact um having been a trades trade worker um for many years uh, i kind of took it upon myself having had to work with a lot of people who like i'm i'm also a musician so oh, um, well there you go i'm pretentious when it comes to music <laughs> uh and, which is to say that you know Working around a lot of other trades folk, our, our taste in music, it's not that there's no overlap at all. It's just generally going to be, you know, not what I want to hear, right? right? You know, I like classic rock, but at the same time, it's like, I can only hear Stairway to Heaven so many times <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, I actually, um, the last... Year and a half, I was working at the uh, the electrical company I was working for. I made a playlist, and it was just like specifically uh, curated to suit many tastes, uh. but none of it none of it would be offensive to me. <laughs> 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 so you know, there there's some classical, there's some rock, there's even a little bit of rap, a little bit of country. Rap and country are probably the lower on my like most Go -tos. actively listen to yeah, yeah, yeah. genres yeah. but uh you know i listen to a little bit of everything nice you have a favorite uh band musician singer songwriter oh uh, you know ween is kind of my, okay my, uh, all right that gives my me... number one okay In fact, I saw them back in uh july in memphis yeah they were just uh, aren't they on like a little uh tour Mm -hmm. uh, this was actually a festival oh. uh, yeah so you know I've seen Ween before and they usually do like a three hour show but since it was a festival it was like only an hour and a half still very good right. still enjoyed it tremendously right. yeah I think music is very uh, important when uh, playing with Chance as a matter of fact uh, I've been watching some interviews again with uh, 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 Brian Eno and uh, Brian Eno oh, nice. has the um, what do they call them? It's the uh, obscure. Oh gosh, I'll find whatever it, I forgot what the it's a deck of cards that he brings to the studio. And when him and the band come to an intersection that they can't agree upon, he takes this deck of cards out and, oblique obscurity oblique. Anyway. Um, and so he shuffles these cards and then it'll he'll throw the card down and it'll say something to the extent of like play the drum track backwards. Oh. Uh -huh. And so now they're working on a track, but whatever the track is that they're in an impasse on, he'll they'll just go ahead with the tape. You know, uh, digitally now it's a lot easier, but they'll they'll play it backwards and then listen to it. And of course, you're going to have reaction. Positive and negative is a very out positive and negative reactions or I like and dislike, I should say, are obviously things where it's like too opinionated. But when you can hear something and go, I absolutely don't think that works because, or you know what, that's interesting because, and then you can move in that direction. You're going to have a lot more productivity in, in, in that. Oh, absolutely. So um, go ahead. Were you going to say something? No, no, no. Okay. Go ahead. Um, 
because one of the things I've been thinking about lately is, uh, and interested too, is are you having, like, is let's say the story in this pinup expanding on you? Like, are you telling kind of yourself, like, how they got to the curtain to pull it away, and then two days after the curtain, you know, they moved through the curtain? Um, no, not 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 necessarily for this specific piece, uh, which is not to say... Uh, yeah, I, I just mentally haven't gone down that path. Okay. Uh, it's not to say that I'm not interested sure. in, in those details. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, that said, <clears throat> it's not like I haven't put any, as I've uh, reached out to you, it's not like I haven't put any thought into, like, uh, the story, you know, the broader story of Crom. Um, but this specific piece, it's pretty... Yeah, I haven't, I haven't written a story around it yet. Well, you know, I'm not asking in the way of writing a story. I'm just thinking more along the lines of like how, how, you, how let's say your, your creative process engages. I am, I have um, severe uh, dyslexia. So actually even reading a comic book can be very difficult. I actually look through the pictures uh, for the first mm -hmm. time. And then the second time I will you know, kind of take a couple pages at a time, but then I'll kind of just move up ahead. And then I might, you know, so I jump around a lot. When I work on any kind of image, um, even reading books or, you know, even comics, I have a tendency to expand upon what I'm seeing. Right. I follow. So it's, and, and whether it becomes a story or not is obviously a, a more, let's say, professional <laughs> tracking, right, right. tracking of my how time. Much, <laughs> how much time are you going to devote into Correct, that? correct, correct. Why oh, wow. I, got, I just, I just put together another graphic novel in my head. Let me see if I have another two years added on to my life. <laughs> right, exactly. So, you know, one, one little piece that is present in this is this little you know, concentric circle piece. Uh, some version of that, I haven't done a lot of research on it to know how authentic it is, but um, one detail about Conan, who Krom is based on, um, is that he's a Sumerian. Yeah. Sumerians are supposedly of Atlantean origin. Descent. They're, yep. you know, from Atlantis, yeah. Atlantis descendants. And so I just looked up, like, what are some symbols oh, attributed wow. to Atlantis? Wow. And this is one of them. So wow. that m will probably make an appearance uh, in one way or another in the final piece. Whoa. Now, see, that's I like that. That's that's always a good good thing to do, go with chance is actually having some strong symbology to move with. Right. Nice. So do you have any questions for me? Oh, actually, yeah. Oh, good, um, good. <laughs> just because I've been uh, been watching you uh, draw on the Instagram. Uh-huh. And uh, what's that little, uh, it almost looks like a fat ballpoint pen that you're using to brush ink with. What is that brush you're using? Fat ballpoint pen. It almost looks like a fat, you know, one of those old school clickable uh it's not it's not this is it yeah, yeah yeah oh okay okay so this is a oh gosh what it's all written in japanese it's from pilot i'll send you the link i'll even put a link in the uh -huh. description below um i got this from jetpens.com and it is it's got a really decent uh let me grab a little piece of paper here And so it has a really nice, decent variable, close to how I always felt um, croquil brushes worked for me. But of course, uh -huh. I don't have to keep dipping ink. But I really, really enjoy right. I enjoy the uh, variation. Then it's got a fatter side, and this one's just starting to to die out. So I'm starting to get a little, which I love, by the way. So I have like a pile of brand new ones and ones I'm working with and then ones that are starting to dry out. Um, but I did spend some time in Japan in college and I did uh, 
three calligraphy classes in two oh, wow. years. Um, and it was obviously something I wanted to pick up as a brush skill for painting. But when mm -hmm. I got out of school and started getting into um, uh, illustration, inking specifically, um, like the crow quill brush was always closest to feeling like a uh, sumi brush ink. But now in Japan, they have all of these types of uh, brushes, br you know, ink pens that act pretty much like a brush and ink. So that's that's right, right. that's one of my go tos. <clears throat> This one one of the ones I've seen you use and one that I always like is that Tombow. Yes. Um, yes. Pen. I think I have one around here. Yeah. Those though, I, uh, here we go. The, the scary sad part about this, which was a great accident that has led me into uh, using it kind of for fuzzy dark areas. In other words, when it goes on, you know, like that's very similar to that, you know, this stuff, this this oh, pen yeah. here but this is a water base so when you put water over it it completely knocks the sharp edges off so it bleeds it um nice and nice. then and well, then one of my favorite I, pencils is a water color pencil see like a, it's there you go it's the same type of thing it, that's why i like the uh water soluble graphite instead of the black ink as my wash because it uh -huh. it it's more of a blurry feeling than a a edgy feeling like these are this is i believe now this is i think this is uh the graphite i was knocking my brush off to get this kind of like flare there and everything but yeah it's experimentation is key and fun as heck i mean before there was the internet and buying buying art supplies on online um it was always going down to the art store and getting what you needed and then buying one or two other pens or something that you might see is is as cool and this one actually right. has this is a really nice blunt uh line making almost um almost like a sharpie but once again it'll do the same thing so if i'm building a page i haven't done it yet in here because this is just straight ballpoint pen lines and then the wash on it i'll start filling in certain areas probably this area specifically with this, which will appear as a flat black shape. But once I put another wash on it, it'll start bleeding the edges off. So it'll be a, a fuzzier instead of flat black. Nice, nice. Yeah, a tool of mine, like, I love using the parallel pens. Have you used any of these? They're no. They're like style pens. What's they the point really like? Fat. What's that What's that point oh, like? It's very... It's kind of like a rapidograph, eh? Well, oh, not zoom. Focus. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. So, oh, you're going to have to send me a link to that. That's... Uh... So, so da you know Daniel Warren Johnson? Yes, yes. Artist. I'd, I'd wa randomly watched his, like, Friday night stream yeah. one night and saw he was using that and it's super cool I, I really like it but i will say that uh it go the ink goes on thick so smearing really like if, if you're having too much fun you're gonna screw yourself at some point yeah as a matter of fact to plug uh the turbo channel and day dan from uh rave sensation uh the three of us are going to do a review of his dead earth wonder woman dead earth which hell yeah you can see I mean, he's just, you know, he's out of that Paul Pope school. Yes. Um, and that I, I, and then Becky Cloonan. And when I was really getting back into comics, those guys were, um, you know, the shooting stars. So they gave me a lot of juice to, to get back in because I felt like there was a, there was a more artsy acceptableness to um, making a comic than just the Marvel method or DC you know, pulling that train, you know, from that, from that way on. Um, another guy, I don't know if you know, where's my, anyhow. Oh, here it is. My fat pelican. Da -da -da -da. Uh, are you, are you familiar with, um, Ashley Wood? Oh yeah. Uh, -huh. uh this guy, I, I actually, read. 
I haven't read a lot of his comics, but I'm aware of him. Uh, there's not like much it. to read, <laughs> to be uh-huh. honest with you. I've been thinking about getting his, like, I think it was it robots and zombies or something like that. Um, but he uses these calligraphy pens, which are the chisel uh-huh. tip. So he makes these chis- when he makes these lines, that he just has such an amazing uh, control that there's a flow to these just little sketches. And these are some, this was a book of like 500 sketches where I think he was doing them as like something he was sending out to his like fans every morning. So it was like his warm up doodle. Um, oh, uh-huh. And so he ended up putting this book together and I was following him. It's funny because he was, he did this through blurb and they were like, I think I paid maybe like 50 bucks five bucks, including shipping on there. He was not making any profit on it. This book already I know is like worth 300 bucks because nobody took advantage of it and he's not reprinting it. He did do a reprint, um, but it ended up being uh, um, like a different version. Like he created a different version, which was very smart. But um, yeah, he just has this, uh, Jim Mafood is a kind of follower in that school. Oh yeah, for, I was. For... I just was recounting. Um, you know, I I follow. Um, I'm a, a patron of Jim Rug of Car Okay, Cafe. Right. And uh, I reached out to him. Oh yeah, because I had a, a suggestion for a book. Right. It was, basically, I was like, you know, I wrote like hey i know this is probably a politically charged and probably not something you're going to do but <laughs> y'all should do y'all should do uh palestine by joe sacco on the channel wow uh, <clears throat> but you know he he responded and he's like oh um probably not but you know he proceeded to say like you know joe sacco was one of the first comic book writers i ever saw speak in person Ooh. Uh, Jim Mafood was the first comic artist I saw speak in person. Nice. Oddly enough, uh, tragically, uh, it was on 9-11. Whoa. Where were you? Yeah. Uh, at Memphis College of Art. Okay. Okay. So you weren't. You weren't. He was a visiting speaker nice. at the college. Yeah. Wow. That's real freaky, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. remembers where they were, 9-11. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I was working in a um, a multimedia office uh, at the time, and uh, one of the uh, higher ups said, uh, "Hey, someone flew a plane into the World Trade Center." Or yeah, and we're all like, "What?" And I just remember the systematic, like, "Oh, one went into the Pentagon. Oh, one went down." You know, and and I just remember it literally going very close to the feeling I've had, like watching planet of the apes. Like there was this post apocalyptic feeling that had, had come across. Like it was just un, you know, chilling, just chilling. So, but oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, but uh, wow, that is just something else. But you were saying about Jim Moffat's work, right? Very loose, very uh, just expressive kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I was just saying uh, yesterday with Jake, um, we did a, um, I just don't have anything. Oh, I have it downstairs. Um, a, a comics that influenced we recorded yesterday. And uh, I was showing off a Drouillet book, Philippe Drouillet. And oh, I was really? commenting about one of the things that I love about his work is he works like, I don't think he works anything smaller for a comic book page like other than like 24 by 36. You know, and I unfortunately Uh am in a uh, townhouse, you know, small, small uh, studio, if you will, office space. And I'm pretty crammed in like I was living in Japan. Um, But I I dream of a time where I could do in a freer way. You know, uh, uh, I'm going to actually head towards 14 by 17 is what I want to, because it's that it's the. The difference in making art or line, let's just say, not even art, line, is whether you're working with your wrist or you're working with your, your, shoulder. Your, your shoulder. 
you know. So, um, you know, this work, which is all ballpoint pen that I had done uh, back in 2017 or 16 around that area, this is all wrist action. And all I'm doing now is just applying my current um, gray valuing system to it. Um, but I am dying to really expand, uh, uh, get, get, have more, have more s space on the page to do some of these, you know, areas that just seem to be a little too small and tight. So, you know, um, to that end, you know, for, to get paper, uh, for, for the crown piece, uh, you know, I, I had trouble finding, I mean, maybe, maybe it's just a different dimension and the printed dimension is 11 by 17, but finding 11 by 17 paper, I just couldn't find any. So I just bought several big sheets and cut them down. It, right there there is a paper shortage out there. Um, and so paper like hammer mill, I have, um, their account on Amazon save to give me notifications of when stock comes into replenishing, especially for my 13 by 19. But I still have a half a ream. I mean, I still probably have about a hundred, hundred so page, you know, pages still to, to go on it and everything. But uh, I would go I mean, Bristol board too. Cause one of the other problems I'm facing issue, I don't want to call it a problem um, is I get uh, wobbly. So the, the, I, pr I, I, uh, um, you know, I'll saturate the pages prior in water, um, oh, uh -huh. and then I'll press them overnight. Then I'll do the wash with the the uh, uh, liquid mask pens. Um, but I think the pens are actually uh, when they dry, they pull the paper, and so oh, yeah. even uh -huh. with that. You know, I still. What kind have, of paper are you using? It's a hammer mill. I think it's a sixty-seven eighty. Uh, it doesn't say it on the outside, but I I literally just looked for you know something higher than eleven by seventeen, and the next was thirteen by nineteen, um, and then I found a cardstock through Amazon, so it gives me a little bit more. And then these pages were originally done eleven by seventeen ballpoint pen. But I just printed them out um, onto the third, just stretched them out to 13 by 19 to give me, you know, a place to run on, you know. So as I said, like I bought bigger sheets and I didn't even, you know, I wasn't planning on being this fancy. It just ended up being uh, one of those like, um, oh, it's not that much more expensive <laughs> individual sheets. Right. But, you know, this is like Strathmore 500, right? And it's that's, the good stuff. That's the good stuff. Crom um, thanks you. Yes. Well, you know, it just it just happened to be one of those things. Like if I was getting a book of it, we're looking at like, you know, ten dollars plus more. Sure. But you know, you know, five sheets of twenty by thirty, it was like you know, three bucks more or right. something like that. Right. Right. Uh, so you know, you know, working with the, some, I've I've never worked on, you know, paper this. I I can just feel how freaking nice this paper is it, yeah it, you know there's a lot to go in the way of um you know using quality supplies um you know i have a tendency to mistreat equipment whether it's art supplies or computers you know i just bang at them I just, sure. you got to do uh -huh. what i want right here and now and then of course when it breaks <laughs> yeah, it breaks um but yeah, you, you just can't, you can't, uh, you can't lose on it. Um, and, and it's a, well, um, it's a good feeling. My, my photography teacher, uh, in college, uh, she, you know, her kind of ethos was like, you know, one, a good photographer can take a good, good photograph with any camera. Right. And the trick of the photographer the trick of the photographer is not to let the camera take the picture it wants to take. Right. Make the camera take the picture you want to take. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm really hoping uh, we're heading in that direction globally, you know, in being aware on making art with, uh, you know, all of this um, AI nonsense that, you know, people are trying to, uh, you know, scare 
the rest of the world into. And I, you know, Jake and I talk about it constantly on the Turbo Podcast. Um, him being a full time educator, and me doing workshops and and having private students. Um, you just got to turn that noise off. Uh, uh, but it's just so disheartening to be in a time which we were too. Like I remember. He was the one that made me get a computer. I was anti working on computers till 98. Um, and we had, sure. we had been working together, I think since 95. Um, and it's not even, we, we, we were not always strictly comics. He would get work because he lived in New York and it'd just be a three month job to put together a, a catalog or a magazine or, or whatever it was, website building, you know, those types of things. And he's like, dude, I can get you more work if you had a computer. Um, but I have to say <laughs> both of us still, I don't have the same machines. He has one of the early, he has his I, iMac. I think it's like a 2000 or something. And, uh, but he still uses Quark Express on that iMac, which you can't get anymore. And both of us still use Photoshop seven. And the reason is, is I don't want to do this. Neither one of us wants to do the subscription. So, and it does everything that I always needed to do. And so he, right. he, that's kind of how I am with Lightroom. And right. Right. Have, uh, an old version of Lightroom. Yeah. But, you know, it just kind of subscription to your point, subscription. That's just a horrendous kind of way of the world. Yes. These days. Yes. Yes. Now I do um, for my Gardner Francis Fox business. I heavily use um, uh, Adobe's uh, Acrobat for PDF uh, and books and everything. Oh, so okay. I, you know, and that all obviously gets written off through the, through the company, but, but yeah. And, and, but the, the other problem, and I've always seen this with in, in art making primarily, especially when comics were being digitally colored, you know, through the nineties, which, you know, I think is the most repulsive thing visually ever to be creative <laughs> are our, uh -huh. our, our digitally colored comics. That's just my opinion. I just think it's, 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 it's just because they had too many bells and whistles to throw in there. So they were never applying themselves to help the story go along in color. It was always, Oh, look at this lens flare here. And let's throw another lens flare here. <laughs> I don't know. Why not? There's room for another lens flare, you know? And you're just like, you know, all these beautiful pages of black and white. Were oh, just to getting... say nothing of the fact of like not even following form. Yeah, or, exactly. You know, exactly. So simple stuff. So yeah, back to my point, I'm really hoping Younger people through art education, however they're getting it, is exactly what you're saying is you can't depend on the camera to take the picture. Right. You know, I can't I can't depend on my paper and pencils drawing my picture. You know, it is really all about the uh, the experimentation and bringing us around to, to a full circle, Adam, taking chances. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you are, as well as Jason, um, you know, the big reason I, I wanted to, to get you guys involved, was hoping to, obviously, to get you involved, is exactly this type of conversation. And I look forward to, um, you know, keeping this, this uh, level of conversation up because, you know, as these videos are out there, I'm hoping there's people that come across us and they go, wow, these guys are doing it more like the way I think I would like to do it. Let me, you know, follow Adam or Jason or Kurt or, you know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, and create a community that, you know, when somebody comes in, they feel confident and comfortable to be able to navigate with inside it. Not to mention there's like, there's a, um, always going to be for me a sense that like, you know, having the discipline to become, you know, better at your craft, you know, no, you know, proper drawing technique versus, you know, inadvisable drawing techniques. All these, like, learnable things are all good and, you know, to, to the benefit of yourself when you, like, employ them. But at the end of the day, like, you know, I folk art is like kind of always going to speak to me yes, in a way yes. like there's just, it's just so, you, you know, singular a vision from a, you know, an individual perspective. Yes. Right? Expression. Yeah, at that individual. Yeah. That individual perspective is like, you know, 
what I respond to a lot of times. It's so individually recognizable to a, a, a specific point of seeing uh, to try to try to be as uh, historically correct as possible in in categorizing outsider art. But I think the thing, the why it's getting, I think, even bigger and, and, and more acceptable is they're, they might be trying to replicate somebody else's style, but they don't have any fundamental support to help translate those skills. So they end up just using what they can in order to just show what they see. And I think it's just... Uh, absolutely invaluable to our society now. Uh, and I, I'm hoping, like I said, it becomes, it, it spreads like wildfire in, in, uh, in reaction to um, AI uh, manipulation of said ART. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, it, it just so happens that, you know, AI has a really, really good marketing department. You know, yeah, I, but they. The, I think the 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 problem, and I, I I've calmed down now over the last couple of months. Is you know all family members and friends around me who are maybe not freaking out, but just in awe of quote said AI. I was like, you've been working with AI mm -hmm. for years. I mean, autocorrect in Word is AI. <laughs> I mean, they they have just super punched it to a point where it, it, and they've been able to coordinate it to respond to you as if it's your buddy. But I remember, God, man, I think probably 10 years ago was on a site, a pretty large site, can't remember what it was. And I think it was the first time um, uh, I used the chat. It was a chat box, right? So I was like, well, why not? Let's just uh -huh. use the, I think it was actually Comcast. Uh, our uh, 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 internet provider. So I go in there mm -hmm. and it's just going through this. It's going through with me and it's trying to answer the question. And at one point I stop and I say, I'm, I got my answer, right? And so they're like, oh, well, can I do anything else for me? And I said, yeah, can you answer one more question? And it says, sure, what's your question? Said, Are you a robot? And it turned off. <laughs> it turned off. Oh, interesting. It closed. So that kind of freaked me out. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was a human on the other side who was offended by it. Or maybe it was just their, their programming saying, hey, we, didn't, we can't let people know that they're talking to robots. And that was 10 years ago. <laughs> Fascinating. So, but it, it's also fuel for our, uh, you know, science fiction, fantasy comic books. So, <laughs> so I just... Uh, remembered a, an, another little question Absolutely. for you. Um, so I see your pieces actually have the text on them. Yeah, I print them out. Yep. Um, uh, something I noticed in, you know, finishing up uh, the copy of Chrome that you sent me yep. is, um, and I'm curious uh, it, how this has kind of influenced your, like this next round of Chrome that's happening, right? Or, you know, I, I think you maybe said this was print on demand. So maybe yes. it's just like a inconsistency issue. But I know like some of the text like got cut off. Oh, I don't know if that was like common. Are you saying like in, it, your, in the uh, the print job? Like, yeah, like like the top little piece, like the wait, wait, what page is that with the letters on the what page is that? That's um, submit it's... submitting to the Amazons. Uh, no, no. Yeah, because it is very close on mine. But did yours get completely cut off? Just like, you know, it, it just barely cuts off the top of the top yeah. row of letters. You can still read it, right? So I also had these pages, like I said, were originally formatted to 11 by 17. And I condensed them to the 6 by 9. And that conversion uh, made the top and bottle, bottom because I wanted the width to not have any like white showing it i had uh -huh. to sacrifice for that top so when i did my preliminary i was like i'm cool with it now 
in the past with Gardner Francis Fox and printing books, um, uh, I have had one or two where there were uh, print anomalies that were um, had come through and, and it was unreadable and the purchaser had contacted me and because I used the print on demand, which by the way is a really good thing because it wasn't out of pocket for me, um, I was able to get them a uh, replacement copy at no extra charge. So they just had it. Uh-huh. They had to take a picture. They take. They took the picture. They sent it to me. I sent it to Lulu. Lulu within like two days automatically generated a new invoice for um, a new copy. So that's uh, there's so. And I'm going to get into it closer to May when we're releasing the book. And the way I'm doing um, Crom uh, uh, revised is all print on demand, primarily for the month. The month of May will only be through my website. In which I'll be using Lulu, and then I'll be doing a um, ISBN number ver- version for um, one version um, for uh, um, uh, Amazon. So, and it's it's basically for two major reasons, and the first reasons is uh, shipping. Uh, Amazon is uh-huh. everywhere in the world and is not going to stop being everywhere in the world. Uh, so <laughs> you can. I can have books printed and shipped to you in Australia for three, four dollars instead of thirty-five from here. Um, and then, if there's a problem with the product, I don't suffer uh, the consequences financially um, for that. Right. And so, um, so if you, I, I, and I do say this um, and sincerely, Adam, if you have something wrong with your book, like, and you would like take pictures, I can, like I say, I can submit it to them. And we could see what happens from there. Um, but I, it's, yeah, the more I look at it, it's, uh, yeah, cause this is like right there. So if it did get, you know, cause they're also printing from different places in the world. They're not, it's not, all, oh, yeah. that's just like, and just like Amazon, Lulu hires out to print, print shops. So they become the shop that prints for Lulu and then ships from Lulu using their, their stuff but yeah yeah like down here it's the bottom of the the p and captured is is trimmed yeah it's one of those things where you know again i wasn't quite sure if like uh, like i remember you kind of mentioning print on demand yep. so i didn't know if like this is like just a, a an anomaly in you know just this particular version it didn't impede my reading experience or anything like that but just curious about like uh how that affected you like in like deciding the next book. well you know um in an artsy fartsy way my approach to this was the reason i was using ballpoint pen and the integration of there's no separation of panels and the integration of the word balloons uh-huh. and then quoting said uh, dialogue is I wanted to see how closely I could um, blur the word and picture together. So, oh, uh-huh. so, you know, and then I get art direction now from, from Jake and we have a lot of conversations about placement and movement of word balloons and adding and subtracting and, and going from there, but I'm dealing with now a grave value. So I'm, I'm, I'm basically, suppressing you know line art to line punched out font you know so and 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 those two things playing you know artsy yeah bless you artsy fartsy wise is word and picture and the integration of of one thing because i i admit um and it's one of the one of the blessings i have in um uh jake as my my partner on 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 turbo pit fighter and I'm integrating uh-huh. him in Craig. I'm not very good at sequential storytelling. And and to be very frank, I, I'm not that interested thinking that way. I love comics. I love sequencing sequencing pictures. But when it gets to me and my own personal stuff, I just derail from, you know, once again, Marvel method or, you know, uh, uh, let's say making sense, uh, you know, like, mm-hmm. like these stories, as much as they might be archaic from being 1950, they do all the things they're supposed to do as a sequential comic book. And obviously Gardner, mm-hmm. Gardner Fox at like 25 years into being in the business, <laughs> you 
you know, knows how to, knows how to handle that. But, you know, I am moving in a more artsy fartsy way of the integration of, of, uh, word and picture and it being, co um, uh, comic booky, but even just, uh, um, illustration meets text, you know, how, how different is that? Uh, if one side is words and the other side is an image. Because my favorite illustrator and one of the reasons I got into art in the first place was um, N.C. Wyeth. And N.C. Wyeth is, uh, you know, recorded to say that he never illustrated anything in the story. Like he never circled said paragraph and illustrated it. He broke in between the pages from page 59 to page 60 and inserted an illustration added to the story. Uh -huh. That was the power of his. And I chased that even with my illustrating uh, Gardner Fox's work. Super cool. N NC White? Maybe I'm not familiar. I, I, so Howard Pyle is the, you know, the father of uh, the golden age of uh, illustration. He ran for two years. He's from Wilmington. He he's in uh, he's like our cornerstone here for the Delaware Art Museum. Um, he ran for two years um, a school where he charged you nothing. You just had to find your own room and board, and you just came and painted in his studio um, because the publishing companies needed illustrators, and so he would bring you up to uh, Simon and Schuster and all those those guys in New York and he got a cut of what you got paid for the illustrations until you became uh, okay. on your own. NC Wyeth is his most recognized star pupil, but there's a guy by the name of Frank Schoonover, which Jason uh -huh. <laughs> believes he has uh, uh, um, some family connections to, uh, um, who also was uh, settled in um, uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Um, and there's a, 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 a Harvey Dunn, um, is another real power player when it comes to like the establishment of, of American uh, illustrators. So N.C. Wyeth, Chad's for PA. Um, my wife and I are members of the Brandywine River Museum. Um, his son is Andrew Wyeth and Andrew's son is Jamie Wyeth. So there's this <laughs> uh, pedigree of, of family and art. Um, but yeah, I... Um, uh, the illustrator Frank Frazetta, uh, it's no surprise to make this statement, swiped stylistically from NCY's power. He just applied he just applied the the comic book aesthetic, the figurative compositional aesthetic. Right. Then he applied this NCYS attack to the canvas. So interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd like to hear your um, reaction next time we get together. Yeah, absolutely. I will, I'm definitely going to check them cool, out. Cool, cool. Frank Schoonover was the other Frank one? Frank Schoonover, S-C-H-O-O-N-O-V-E-R. Yep. Got it. Yeah. Cool deal. So. I, uh, in the, uh, and like being, uh, getting the juices flowing this morning, I was uh, flipping through this this morning. Oh, gosh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. He's, he's really, I don't think comics would have ever survived if he didn't inject his life and blood to them. I, I just think he, the more and more I look at his work and where it was connected, uh, even European wise, uh, he's just unmatchable, unmatchable. In a class all his own. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. And the fact that he just relied so heavily and honestly to the pulps um, and those original comics that were coming out of it really keeps it alive. And I'm, right. I'm super happy that they're reprinting his work and pushing it. And his uh, daughter is very, very uh, integral as an estate uh, executor. So, oh, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Super she cool. was in the studio with him the last year's. Um, call, helping him color, doing everything. So, ah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming she's super personal, doesn't want to go out into the comic book world, nerd them, be questioned to death about did dad, did dad do this and dad do that? But 
there's going to have to be a time where she sits down and does a documentary and, and really shares some of the, some of the mysteries there. Uh, I'd be on board for Heck sure. Yeah. Put a Kickstarter up. <laughs> Yeah. You hear me, AI? I'm telling you, tell them. <laughs> Read this video and tell them, whoever they are, they need to do a Kickstarter for uh, the daughter of Richard Corbin uh, documentary. <laughs> <laughs> but do you have anything else, Adam? Oh, um, no, not really. Uh, just... Yeah, just uh, ready to. Well, actually, I, I got some work today. I got an electrical project to okay. go, uh, take care okay. of first thing after after we're done here. Which I'm not in a hurry. I'm not trying sure. to kick you off. Not anything. at all. Not at all. But um, but after that, this evening, I'm planning on awesome. slapping some in awesome, here. awesome. Yeah, please share on uh, Instagram. Uh, tag uh, tag mm -hmm. me at Kurt Brugel, and then of course uh, hashtag Crom the Barbarian, so we can keep generating some uh some interest in 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 this here project but the next time i have you on you will have this uh this pinup of yours uh pulled together I reckon so um and as i've stated uh and i will can constantly state um this is a low stress project so as the world comes mm -hmm. in and needs to be taken care of before said comic book work <laughs> please don't feel bad. Um, you know, I am going to be pushing probably starting next week for a end of the March turn in. Uh, so art would have to be in and I'll, I'll send a, uh, an email out to uh, the six that are involved and, um, okay. um, you know, stay on your tail if you, you need anything. Um, but as I always say, I'm also here for questions. And if you have some time while you're inking, Adam, Give me a shout out um, and we'll, we'll jump on and uh, share where you're at. Cool. Awesome. Deal. You said end of March. That's kind of, that's tentative. the 10th. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause I'd like to use uh, April okay. to get the books together, you know, and then start doing some promotion. Mm -hmm. If I, you know, and that would be to hit a May 1st uh, um, release, but that's even not, e I'm like, I'm not even applying that uh, as, as strict as possible to uh, stress me out either. So. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to being a part of the, the full that's deal. Great. I'm excited to trains on the Heck track. Yeah. All right, Adam, take care and we will see you later. Thanks, Kurt.